The Polish People's Republic was the official name of Poland until 1989 according to Constitution of 1952 based originally on the Soviet blueprint. Until 1952, the name of the Polish state according to a temporary constitution of 1947 issued by the communists was simply Rich Pospolita Polska, at the time of its founding during final stages of World War II. The new Soviet-controlled Poland was regarded as a puppet entity set up from outside the state concerned, and over time, it developed into a satellite state of the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union had much influence over both internal and external affairs, and Red Army forces were stationed in Poland. In 1945, Soviet generals and advisers formed 80% of the officer cadre of the Polish armed forces. The Polish United Workers' Party became the dominant political party, officially making the country a communist state. History At the Yalta Conference in February 1945, Stalin was able to present his Western allies, Franklin Roosevelt and Winston Churchill, with a fait accompli in Poland. His armed forces were in occupation of the country, and his agents, the communists, were in control of its administration. The USSR was in the process of incorporating the lands in eastern Poland which it had occupied between 1939 and 1941. In compensation, the USSR awarded Poland German territories in Pomerania, Silesia and Brandenburg east of the Oder-Neisse line plus the southern half of East Prussia. These awards were confirmed at the Tripartite Conference of Berlin, otherwise known as the Potsdam Conference in August 1945 after the end of the war in Europe. Stalin was determined that Poland's new government would become his tool towards making Poland a Soviet puppet state controlled by the communists. He had severed relations with the Polish government in exile in London in 1943. But to appease Roosevelt and Churchill he agreed at the Alta that a coalition government would be formed. The communists held a majority of key posts in this new government, and with Soviet support they soon gained almost total control of the country, rigging all elections. Their opponents, led by Stanislaw Mikolajczyk, managed only one victory, but it was a substantial one. Poland preserved its status as an independent state, contrary to the plans of some influential communists such as Wanda Wawrzelewska, who were in favor of Poland becoming another republic of the Soviet Union. This important victory would be their last, however, as the communists, tightening their grip on power, began political persecution of all opposition. Many of their opponents decided to leave the country, and others were put on stage trials and sentenced to many years of imprisonment or execution. In June 1946 the three times yes referendum was held on a number of issues, abolition of the Senate of Poland, land reform, and making the oder neisse line Poland's western border. The communist-controlled Interior Ministry issued results showing that all three questions passed overwhelmingly. Years later, however, evidence was uncovered showing that the referendum had been tainted by massive fraud, and only the third question actually passed. Gomolka then took advantage of a split in the Polish Socialist Party. One faction, which included Prime Minister Edward Osobka, Morawski, wanted to join forces with the Peasant Party and form a united front against the Communists. Another faction, led by Joseph Sarankovich, argued that the Socialists should support the Communists in carrying through a Socialist program, while opposing the imposition of one-party rule. Pre-war political hostilities continued to influence events, and Mikolajczyk would not agree to form a united front with the Socialists. The communists played on these divisions by dismissing Osobka, Moravsky and making Sarankovich prime minister. Between the referendum and the January 1947 general elections, the opposition was subjected to persecution. 
Only the candidates of the pro-government Democratic bloc were allowed to campaign completely unmolested. Meanwhile, several opposition candidates were prevented from campaigning at all. Mike Holajczyk's Polish People's Party in particular suffered persecution. It had opposed the abolition of the Senate as a test of strength against the government. Although it supported the other two questions, the communist-dominated government branded the PSL traitors. This massive oppression was overseen by Gomolka and the provisional president, Bolslaw Beirut. The official results of the election showed the Democratic bloc with 80.1% of the vote. The Democratic bloc was awarded 394 seats to only 28 for the PSL. Mike Holajczyk immediately resigned to protest this implausible result and fled to the United Kingdom in April rather than face arrest. Later, historians confirmed that the official results were only obtained through massive fraud. Government officials didn't even count the real votes in many areas and simply filled in the relevant documents in accordance with instructions from the communists. In other areas, the ballot boxes were either destroyed or replaced with boxes containing pre-filled ballots. The 1947 election marks the beginning of undisguised communist rule in Poland, though it was not officially transformed into the Polish People's Republic until the adoption of the 1952 constitution. However, Gomolka never supported Stalin's control over the Polish communists, and was soon replaced as party leader by the more pliable Beirut. In 1948, the communists consolidated their power, merging with Sarankiewicz, faction of the PPS to form the Polish United Workers' Party, which would monopolize political power in Poland until 1989. In 1949, Soviet Marshal Konstantin Rokossovsky became Polish Minister of National Defense, with the additional title Marshal of Poland, and in 1952 he became Deputy Chairman of the Council of Ministers. Over the coming years, private industry was nationalized, balanced from the pre-war landowners and redistributed to the peasants and millions of Poles were transferred from the Lost Eastern Territories to the lands acquired from Germany. Poland was now to be brought into line with the Soviet model of a people's democracy and a centrally planned socialist economy. The government also embarked on the collectivization of agriculture, although the pace was slower than in other satellites. Poland remained the only Soviet bloc country where individual peasants dominated agriculture. The communists also began the war against Christianity and imprisoned Cardinal Primate Stefan Wyszynski, but it finally turned out unsuccessful, mainly thanks to his attitude. Beirut died in March 1956 and was replaced with Edward Ockab. In June, workers in the industrial city of Poznan went on strike, in what became known as Poznan 1956 protests. Voices began to be raised in the party and among the intellectuals calling for wider reforms of the Stalinist system. Eventually, power shifted towards Gomolka, who replaced Beirut as party leader. Hardline Stalinists were removed from power and many Soviet officers serving in the Polish army were dismissed. This marked the end of the Stalinist era. However, by the mid-1960s Gomolka's reformist veil had long since fallen off, and Poland was starting to experience economic as well as political difficulties. 1970s and 1980s Gomolka's government had decided to prop up the failing economy by suddenly announcing massive increases in the prices of basic foodstuffs. The resulting widespread violent protests resulted in a number of deaths. They also forced another major change in the government, as Gomolka was replaced by Edward Jirik as the new first secretary. Jirik's plan for recovery was centered on massive borrowing, mainly from the United States and West Germany, to re-equip and modernize Polish industry, and to import consumer goods to give the workers some incentive to work.
while it boosted the Polish economy, and is still remembered as the golden age of socialist Poland. The obvious repercussion in the form of massive debt is still felt in Poland even today. This golden age came to an end after the 1973 energy crisis. The failure of the Jiric government, both economically and politically, soon led to the creation of opposition in the form of trade unions, student groups, clandestine newspapers and publishers, imported books and newspapers, and even a flying university. On 16 October 1978, the Archbishop of Krakow, Cardinal Karol Wojtyla, was elected Pope, taking the name John Paul II. The election of a Polish pope had an electrifying effect on what had been, even under communist rule, one of the most devoutly Catholic nations in Europe. Jiric is alleged to have said to his cabinet, Oh God, what are we going to do now? Or, as occasionally reported, Jesus and Mary. This is the end, when John Paul II made his first papal tour of Poland in June 1979, half a million people heard him speak in Warsaw. John Paul II did not call for rebellion. Instead he encouraged the creation of an alternative Poland, of social institutions independent of the government, so that where the next crisis came, the nation would present a united front. A new wave of strikes undermined Jirak's government, and in September Jirak, who was in poor health, was finally removed from office and replaced as party leader by Stanislaw Kania. However, Kania was unable to find an answer for the fast eroding support of communism in Poland. Labour turmoil led to the formation of the independent trade union Solidarity in September 1980, originally led by Lech Walesa. In fact Solidarity became a broad anti-communist social movement ranging from people associated with the Roman Catholic Church, to members of the anti-socialist left. By the end of 1981, Solidarity had 9 million members, a quarter of Poland's population and three times as many as the PUWP had. Kania resigned under Soviet pressure in October and was succeeded by Wojciech Jaruzelski, who had been Defence Minister since 1968 and Premier since February. On December 13, 1981, Jaruzelski proclaimed martial law, suspended solidarity, and temporarily imprisoned most of its leaders. This sudden crackdown on solidarity was reportedly out of fear of Soviet intervention. The government then banned solidarity on October 8, 1982. Martial law was formally lifted in July 1983, though many heightened controls on civil liberties and political life, as well as food rationing, remained in place through the mid to late 1980s. Jaruzelski stepped down as Prime Minister in 1985 and became President. This did not prevent Solidarity from gaining more support and power. Eventually it eroded the dominance of the PUWP, which in 1981 lost approximately 85,000 of its 3 million members. Throughout the mid-1980s, Solidarity persisted solely as an underground organization but by the late 1980s was sufficiently strong to frustrate Jaruzelski attempts at reform, and nationwide strikes in 1988 were one of the factors that forced the government to open a dialogue with solidarity. From February 6 to April 15, 1989, talks of 13 working groups in 94 sessions which became known as the Round Table Talks, saw the PUWP abandon power and radically altered the shape of the country. In June, Poland held its first partially free elections in eight decades. Much to its own surprise, Solidarity took all contested seats in the same, the Parliament's lower house, and all but one seat in the fully free elected Senate. Solidarity persuaded the communists' longtime satellite parties, the United People's Party and Democratic Party, to throw their support to Solidarity. This all but forced Jaruzelski, who had been named president in July, to appoint a Solidarity member as prime minister. Finally, he appointed a Solidarity-led coalition government with Tadosh Mazowiecki as the country's first non-communist prime minister since 1948.
On December 29 the Parliament amended the Constitution to formally restore democracy, the rule of law and civil liberties. This began the Third Polish Republic, and served as a prelude to the fully democratic elections of 1991, only the third free election ever held in Poland. PZPR was finally disbanded on January 30, 1990, even if Valenza could be elected as president only 11 months after. Government and Politics The government and politics of the Polish People's Republic were dominated by the Polish United Workers' Party. Despite the presence of two minor parties, the United People's Party and the Democratic Party, the country was generally reckoned as a one-party state, because these two parties were completely subservient to the communists and had to accept the PZPR's leading role as a condition of their existence. It was dependent on the USSR to the extent of being its satellite state. From 1952 the PRP's highest law was the Constitution of the Polish People's Republic, and the Polish Council of State replaced the Presidency of Poland. Elections were held on the single lists of the Front of National Unity, 